One of the biggest challenges when mixing a song here in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad is getting the individual volume levels of each track sounding right so that you get a balanced mix where you can hear all your instruments, but you're not clipping or distorting. So in this video, I'm going to show you some tips that are going to help you get your best mix. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. Now, one of the questions I get asked an awful lot here in GarageBand is how do I get my mix sounding good? How do I get the volume levels here to balance out and not distort, not be too loud, but also be able to hear all of my instruments as well so that everything's not too quiet? Now, GarageBand has some particular ways of managing volume, which we'll talk about in this video. And by the end, you should be able to have all of the tricks up your sleeve to get your best mix. So let's dive in and take a look now. So I'm going to use this particular track, which is my eight bars of love. I'm using this because it's eight tracks, eight bars. It's very simple. Plus it has a bunch of different instruments. We've got organs, we've got guitars, we've got drums, we've got vocals in here. Now I'm going to do something that I don't usually do or recommend. I'm going to drop all of these volumes all the way back down to zero. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I'm building this song out just like you may be building a song when you are creating one. So what we'll do is let's bring, say, the guitar and we'll tap and drag this guitar up to the top here, just like so. And we'll have the guitar and the bass and maybe the drums even. So if you're building a song here in GarageBand, you might start out by saying, hey, let's, let's get a bit of a guitar riff going on here. So let's just pretend we've dialed in this guitar. We've got it around that default volume. Let's solo this and play our guitar. <laughs> Now, you're probably listening to that guitar going, yep, that's sounding about right. The challenge here is that that's right for an individual solo guitar. But are we are we creating a solo guitar track? No, we're creating a track here that's going to have seven other tracks. And if you're doing 16 tracks or 32 tracks, this becomes even more important. The biggest mistake I see folks make is they have their volume there or even right up here. What you actually want to do is when you start layering in your instruments, most of my volumes sit around about 50%. So let's drop this to 50% and hit play. So you can still hear it clearly there, but you can see here the waveform is not bouncing all the way up here. You're not seeing this. So it's staying quite low. Now, this is okay for your guitar. What about something like drums? Let's just say that we were starting with our drum kit. If we turn this drum kit all the way up to the top here, where I see a lot of folks have their drums, let's play this back. Sounds cool, yeah? It's a nice full drum. And if this was like, if this was Anders or a heavier kit, what we'd be seeing is we'd be distorting. We'd be clipping all the way up here on this particular fader. So we aren't doing that here and it's okay. But the problem is, let's just bring these two together here now. We'll play both of these tracks. <laughs> doesn't look bad yet. You're looking at these meters, you're going, Pete, this is okay. We, we, we can do this. Let's just keep building it. All right, let's add in a bass. So we'll add in our bass here and say we've put in our bass and now we're ready to add this. Let's play all of these now at their max volume. So with our bass here, we're just going to solo that so that you can take a look at this. You can see that little orange marker there. Now that is our clip indicator. That means that our volume is going into the red. It is going to distort and it's not going to sound good at our mix. So let's just play this back so you can see it again. This is our individual bass track. So you can see there, when it hit that dom, it is distorting, it's clipping on that track. So that's telling us instantly that we need to turn it down. And unfortunately, I see a lot of folks that they'll have four tracks, five tracks, six tracks, and they're all clipping. Now, these are digital instruments, which means that they're not an analog source. So it doesn't matter as much if you're clipping because GarageBand will sort of help you out and make sure that it reduces the volume for you. But something like your vocals that you're recording here or anything with an audio recorder track, it really will clip. And it's a great habit to get into to reduce your volumes down. So let's put these to the sort of volume that I would mix these at if I was starting a track here. So we'll play back just the drums, guitar and bass and see if we can get a balanced mix. Okay. 
Okay, that's looking good. That's about where I would have these sitting. It's around about the middle mark. And if you're, again, if you're finding that yours are up here, or even if they're down here, I, I see more people putting them here than down here, then bring them into the middle here. You're going to start getting a better sound. So let's continue now and build out the rest of this mix. Let's bring our piano into the mix here now. So we'll dial up the piano. We're going to hit play, and I'll just see if we can get this piano sitting nicely in the mix here. Okay, that's starting to sound good. Now, I've turned the bass down a little bit. You might have noticed there, and what I tend to do is the drums and the bass, sometimes you will need to tweak those as you go along. So don't be afraid to just move things around as you start mixing. Now, the other thing I want to introduce here is our panning, because as well as our volume, a good way to balance out your track is to pan your instrument. So let's tap on the mixer icon here. Now, our bass is sitting right up the middle, which is where we want it. Let's look at our guitar, because what we might, might want to consider is, let's see if we put the guitar sort of halfway to the right, and let's grab our piano and put this halfway to the left. This is just going to be a good way to widen out our mix and to use that stereo spectrum to get a different sound. Let's hit play now. Very cool. So that's sitting about where I'd want it to be now in the mix there. All right. It's time to bring in our vocals. So let's add in my lead vocal. This can be the toughest thing to get sitting right in the mix with your volume. So we'll come back to the start here. I'm going to dial in my lead vocal and see if I can get it to sit nicely complementing these instruments. Eight little bars to tell you how much I love you. Ooh, yes, it's only eight little bars to tell you how much. So you can see there that I'm already starting to clip. I'm already getting to that zone where I'm clipping on my vocal. So what that's telling me is I probably need to just turn down some of these instruments. I'll just give them a little tweak down to make some room for my vocal. And this is why layering up your mix like this is so important. Now, keep in mind that it doesn't really matter if you're a bit on the low side on the side of low as opposed to too high with your volume because what GarageBand will do is something called auto normalization. I've covered this in a previous video which I'll link up the top and in the description but what that basically means is if your volume is too low if it's below zero dB when you export it it will actually bring up that volume so it will bring up the volume of all these instruments to make sure that the overall master volume is going to be around about that zero decibel so it's competitive with other music that you're going to be listening to so anyway let's continue on with this one we'll hit play again I've only got eight little bars to tell you how much I love you Ooh, yes it's only eight little bars so that's starting to sound about right so you do want your vocals generally in more modern music and even though this is an old 60s style song you do want your vocals to be a bit louder so don't be surprised if your vocals are sitting above all of your instruments because your vocal is often your main instrument all right let's bring in some of these backing vocals now I believe yes I've already panned these to the left and to the right let's go a little bit more aggressive this time let's pan it hard left and hard right that's a great way to have some backing vocals to give you some real stereo width in a mix so let's just grab our vocal and our backing vocal and listen to these in solo first just to get the balance right of the three vocals together. I've only got eight little bars to tell you how much I love you. Ooh, yes, it's only eight little bars. All right, that seems to be about the right volume to complement these. So we'll come back to the start. We'll unsolo those and let's hear them back in our mix. I've only got eight little bars to tell you how much I love you. Sounding pretty good. All right, let's bring in this organ because this is sort of like the pista resistance of this song. We just want a little bit of organ on here. And the organ itself sounds like this. How good is GarageBand's organ? Just quietly, it sounds amazing. Anyway, uh, let's bring it in here to the mix and play. I've only got eight little bars to tell you how much I love Ooh, yes, it's only eight little bars to tell you how much I care. 
variety. We are starting to get there, yeah? So it's sounding like it's a pretty cohesive mix. So what you're noticing here is that nothing is kind of at the same level, but nothing is really up there. Nothing is right up here pushing the boundary. None of our little uh, meters here are clipping or getting even close to clipping. Now, if you're on the iPad, you'll actually have a master meter up the top. You'll actually be able to see how much your master volume is getting up there. On the iPhone here, we don't have that. But again, it's okay, especially if you keep everything low. So let's just play this one more time all the way through and just do any final tweaks to our mix. I've only got eight little bars to tell you how much I love you. Ooh, yes, it's only eight little bars to tell you how much I care. Alrighty, so all I've done there is I've turned the backing vocals down a little bit there, but I'm pretty happy with the mix that I have of these eight tracks. They seem to be sounding good together. Now I'm going to do one final thing in this video just to show you this. There are other things you can do. You can use compression, you can use EQ, and I cover those in a bunch of other videos, which I will link down in the description that you can check out as well. But we're looking at volume and balancing volume in this one. So what I'll do now is I'll export this song, and then I'll just show you what the final waveform of this song is going to look like just to convince you that it's not going to be some wimpy little waveform that's not going to really cut through. So let's do that now. So here's one I prepared earlier. Now all I've done is exported this track from GarageBand into Audio Share, which is my favorite little audio utility app here in iOS. Let's hit play. I've only got eight little bars to tell you how so it's looking and it's sounding good. So even though those volumes are low, we've got a good healthy waveform here to work with. Now it has actually normalized it to zero dB, which is that auto normalization feature of GarageBand. You can see there at the bottom there, that waveform actually going down right to the bottom to zero dB. But the good news is we've still got a bit of headroom here to play with if we wanted to master this track. And I talk all about mastering in some other videos, which will be linked in the description if you want to check those out. So this is all looking pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with this. I can go back and make some adjustments if I want to, but I'm pretty happy with the way that this is looking here now that I've exported that song and it's sounding good here as well. Okay, one final tip and then we're going to finish up here. And this may be my coolest little volume hack of all time here in GarageBand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the FX button up the top here. I'm going to hit record and just record in any old FX here. I've only got eight Don't worry, we're not going to keep it. So I've just recorded like one second of that. I'm going to tap FX and turn it off because I don't want to actually use FX, but I am going to use it to adjust my volume. So what I'll do now is I'll tap on FX, I'll tap it again, and I'm going to delete this little bit of FX we've created there. So now I've got a blank FX track, but here's the beauty part. What I can do now is tap on the mixer icon up the top here. I can tap on this visual EQ. And what we can do here is we can now adjust our master volume. Yes, this is a hack that is going to let you have a master volume fader for your track here. So let's hit play. We'll turn the volume down and hit play. And we'll dial that up. To tell you how much I love you. So how cool is that? If your overall volume is slightly too loud or slightly too soft, you want to turn everything up without having to come in here and turn each individual track up or down. All you need to do is add an FX track, delete the effects, and then use the EQ here to actually adjust your volume. And yes, you can use the EQ here as well. So if you find that your overall mix is a little bit too treble heavy, you can drop it down there to not enough bass in there turn your bass up and that will turn it up for the entire mix. So that's a cool little additional bonus tip there that can really help you if you're trying to balance out your tracks. You got a lot of tracks and you want to adjust your volume here in GarageBand. So I hope these tips have helped you out if your tracks have been clipping or distorting, if your volume is too loud, if it's too soft, or if it's somewhere in between. Hopefully these tips are going to help you get a balanced mix and truly create and release your best music. There's two more videos all about GarageBand linked down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, and I'll see you on the next video.